Dr. Kate Tolenko. She's founder and CEO of Corvus Health, a global health firm. Welcome back, Kate. Thank you. So, overall, how would you rate China's vaccination rollout compared with the rest of the world? I mean, it has already administered access of 170 million doses. Well, an important thing to think about with uh, uh, China's efforts is that at first, China really put most of its containment efforts in isolation and testing and, and social lockdowns. And, and so because of that, uh, it hasn't needed as much an emphasis on vaccination that uh, Europe and North America have needed. But as you mentioned, China has uh, set the goal of vaccinating 40% of its population by June and probably 70% by mid-2022. Uh, and I think they will be able uh, to reach those goals. You know, the big question now is uh, about the announcement recently that some of the Chinese manufactured vaccines aren't as effective as originally thought. And no, no, China's first mRNA vaccine is ready for final stage trials overseas. How significant is this for the overall vaccine program? It is for two reasons, one of which is that the mRNA vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer, have been found to be very effective, around 95% effective. Also, they haven't had the problems with blood clots that some of the adenovirus uh, vaccines, such as J&J uh, and, &J and, uh, and AstraZeneca, have had. So, so it's good from that point of view. And from another point of view, it's good because for China to be able to produce these cutting-edge mRNA vaccines really bodes well for the future of the, the vaccine industry in China. Right. Now, China's mRNA vaccine is slightly different from the Pfizer and Moderna shots in that it does not require the ultra-cold temperatures for storage. So what uh, kind of difference will that make for distribution, not just for the country, but globally? It will make a huge difference, especially for low-income countries that don't have the the cold chain that they need to, to keep these ultra-low uh, temperatures. So China has already started distributing its existing vaccines to, to low- and middle-income countries. And I think once the mRNA vaccine is available, it'll be able to do that even faster. Now, is this just mostly an issue of supply, or is there also a delivery infrastructure at play uh, that accounts for the success of China's program so far? Oh, so for the success of China's uh, program, I think it's both the supply, but also the incredible delivery system. You know, as was mentioned, in a single province, you have 2,000 vaccination sites. That that really is, is quite large. So so that's been a huge help in the effort to, uh, to vaccinate Chinese citizens. And I think when you look globally, it's not just the supply. The challenge will also be the distribution system and, frankly, also people's willingness to receive vaccines, especially now that two vaccines vaccines have been suspended due to blood clots. I think we can see more vaccine hesitancy. Um, Kate, I want to circle back to something you mentioned earlier. I mean, China is one of the biggest suppliers and donors of vaccines. Um, so how are all these countries viewing what's happening in China and how that might affect them? I think there's a lot of watching and waiting to see what happens. Uh, I, it's also encouraging the fact that the World Health Organization is looking at two of the Chinese vaccines for their emergency use listing, and they would then be entered into the COVAX global program. So if that were to happen, I think that would give other countries confidence in the Chinese vaccine. But one thing that certainly is needed is the Chinese manufacturers need to make public the data from their phase three clinical trials. Dr. Kejelenko, always good to have your insight. Thank you.